Hi, this is Tom from zerodefinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through tinnitus. And you can find written notes on this topic at zerodefinals.com slash tinnitus or in the ear, nose and throat section of the Zero Definals surgery book. So let's jump straight in. Tinnitus refers to a persistent additional sound that is heard but is not present in the surrounding environment. It may be described as a ringing in the ears, but it can also be a buzzing, hissing or humming noise. The additional noise experienced with tinnitus is thought to result from a background sensory signal produced by the cochlea that's not effectively filtered out by the central auditory system. In a quiet enough environment, almost everyone will experience some background noise or tinnitus. This becomes more prominent the more attention it's given. Let's talk about the causes. Primary tinnitus has no identifiable cause and often occurs with sensory neural hearing loss. So in someone who has sensory neural hearing loss, they may experience primary tinnitus. Secondary tinnitus refers to tinnitus with an identifiable cause, and the causes include impacted earwax, an ear infection, many airs disease, noise exposure, medications, for example, loop diuretics, gentamicin and chemotherapy drugs such as cisplatin, acoustic neuromas, multiple sclerosis, trauma and depression. Tinnitus may also be associated with systemic conditions such as anemia, diabetes, hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism and hyperlipidemia with raised blood lipid levels. Objective tinnitus refers to when a patient can objectively hear an extra sound within their head. This sound can also be observable on examination by auscultating with a stethoscope around their ear. In patients with objective tinnitus, actual additional sounds may be caused by carotid artery stenosis, where there's a pulsatile carotid brewery with turbulent flow past the stenotic area of the carotid artery, Aortic stenosis, where the murmur radiates up into the carotid and up into the neck. Arteriovenous malformations, which cause a pulsatile sound. And eustachian tube dysfunction, which typically causes popping or clicking noises. A tom tip for you. I think of primary tinnitus as the ears trying to turn up the volume when they cannot hear the surrounding noises as well. This is a helpful way of explaining it to patients who have tinnitus associated with hearing loss. Using hearing aids allows the ears to pick up noises from the environment better so they can turn the volume down, therefore reducing the tinnitus. The actual cause of tinnitus is not entirely understood, so this is not entirely accurate, but it is a helpful analogy. Next let's talk about assessment of somebody who has tinnitus. Ask about the pattern of symptoms, whether it's unilateral or bilateral, the frequency and duration of symptoms, the severity, and whether the sound is pulsatile or non-pulsatile. Pulsatile sounds indicate a cardiovascular cause, such as carotid artery stenosis with a brewery. A focused history and examination can be used to identify any underlying causes and this will include assessing for contributing factors such as hearing loss or noise exposure, 
associated symptoms, for example, hearing loss, vertigo, pain or discharge from the ear, stress and anxiety that may be contributing. Otoscopy can be used to look in the ear for causes such as earwax or infection. And Weber's and Rinne's tests can be used to assess hearing loss. Next let's talk about investigations. The NICE clinical knowledge summaries updated in March 2020 suggest considering blood tests for possible underlying causes. And this includes a full blood count to check for anemia, glucose levels to check for diabetes, thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH to test for thyroid disorders and blood lipid levels to test for hyperlipidemia. Performing audiometry can be used to assess the hearing in detail and help establish the underlying cause. Imaging, for example a CT or MRI scan, may rarely be required in order to investigate for underlying causes such as vascular malformations or acoustic neuromas. Let's talk about the red flags that could indicate a serious underlying cause for the tinnitus. These red flags would indicate the need for a specialist assessment and they include unilateral tinnitus, pulsatile tinnitus, hyperacusis, which is hypersensitivity, pain or distress with the environmental sounds, associated unilateral hearing loss, associated sudden onset hearing loss, associated vertigo or dizziness, headaches or visual symptoms, associated neurological symptoms or signs, for example a facial nerve palsy or signs of a stroke, and suicidal ideation that's related to the tinnitus. Finally, let's talk about management. Tinnitus tends to improve or resolve over time without any interventions. Underlying causes of tinnitus can be treated, such as impacted earwax or infection in the ears. Several measures can be used to help improve and manage the symptoms and these include using hearing aids to treat hearing loss, sound therapy by adding background noise to mask the tinnitus and cognitive behavioural therapy. If you like this video, consider joining the Zero to Finals Patreon account where you get early access to these videos before they appear on YouTube. You also get access to my comprehensive course on how to learn medicine and do well in medical exams, digital flashcards for rapidly testing the key facts you need for medical exams, early access to the Zero to Finals podcast episodes and question podcasts which you can use to test your knowledge on the go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.